But then it still has to accelerate and deaccelerate. But here comes the tool. Look, here's the tool. All different corner sizes. Look at it. Look at it. Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. We are outside of Sacramento, California. Let's go on a tour of AB Tools. If you don't know who AB Tools is, they make the Shear Hog, which you guys know we love. Card here to uh, us using the Shear Hog to run just awesome material removal rates on aluminum on our Tormach. Um, we've gotten to know AB Tools, they do a great job with their social media and Instagram. We met them at IMTS. They said, uh, hey, come out. We were gonna be in San Francisco for an Autodesk event. And so let's go tour their facility and see how they make these things. So AB Tool uses a lot of vertical machining centers, mostly all Haas actually, to manufacture and grind tools, which is really cool. So it's a five axis Haas or a VF3 three axis. It's got a five axis trunnion on it. And here we go. Talk us through this. Well, right now it's the... Uh, oh, so this is the part we're making? Yeah, these are the parts we're making right here. Shear hog, one and a quarter inch shear hog. Okay, two flute, one and a quarter inch shear hog. Right now it's uh, finishing the pockets. So we're machining the inset where the insert will actually go. And and has the thread already been thread milled? Not yet. Okay. That'll happen here though. Mm -hmm. Yep. Cool. And so this machine's got a pallet changer, so that whole table will I think automatically come out mm -hmm. and then they can load in a second a second setup or operation. Cool. Oh, you can open the door. Yeah, you can open it once. Right now it's partial on the hole. You can drill, you can drill. Spot, drill, thread now. Fine. Interesting. So the clearance plane was sort of to the side and to the up there. I like that. You write this by hand? Mm -hmm. Yeah, those have been heat treated already. Yeah. Okay, so that's a form of hard turning or hard milling. Right. Cool. So they're, they're, they've been heat treated to from 36 to 38 Rockwell. Okay, so still not too it's crazy not too hard. Bad. It, it, it kind of eats up the little end mills, but not too bad. But it ought to cut pretty nice though, right? I mean, when yeah. you're making a chip. Raw material is it? Chamfering, or is there a relief on the pocket of the wall? I guess. So the trunnion just rotated, which is so cool. You know, it's all just positional fit, but still makes so much sense. You know, you really got no just one setup. One setup, yeah. It was good for me to be able to do it because get back to machining and, and yeah. you know use our tools a lot. And, and so yeah. it, was, it was a fun year to be able to do that. But I had to do both. So, it was kind of <laughs> so most every shear hog in the last few years, at least, has come off this machine. No, we no. just start. We just put this back to actual machining, not grinding this year. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, so we've been making these over there for years. Yeah. This is just freed up, giving us more capacity. Awesome. And it's nice, you know, having the you know, devices over there so we can, we don't have to take anything off over there. If we're doing something, yeah. we got to take it off yeah. and then throw a vice on here. We can just go in. Go in. It's funny because I'll, I'll hold the camera up. You, know, you can see how big 
this place is and how many machining centers they've got. And I think I think this is the first standard, you know, six inch vise I found in the whole place. Right here. Yeah. Yeah, he was saying it's Every, just every two years. Yeah. Cool. So, here we go. There is a one and a quarter inch two flute shear hog. Boom. So after this, um, Al, it needs to get uh, what? What's left? Uh, well, Debert. Debert. Would you do by hand? Yep. Okay. And then heat treat. Heat treat. And then the shank will get finished crown Good. and black oxide. Black oxide. Okay. Got it. Yep. And that's the same tool you used last night. Yeah, so Tim used that exact tool yeah, in his yeah. uh, his uh, demo. Not that exact. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't work that well. If you get the DeLorean. Yes, we went back in time. We made different stuff. Yeah. Here we go on drilling. Looks like a little ER 11 maybe, or ER 10. Um, yeah. Okay. You don't make any drills though, right? You'll do some solid car yeah. drills. Special. Especially, yeah. Cool. Now we got the thread mill. And AB does make thread mill. Single point? So here's our, our insert machine. I, I guess I could tell you the story again a little bit. Yeah, please. Okay. So we make the aluminum hog. We saw earlier that you saw the uh, my son grinding the, modifying the yep. TFGs for the aluminum hog. So A.B. Allen Baker uh, always felt like uh, it wasn't it wasn't good enough. He wasn't happy with the cutter in that he didn't feel you could remove remove enough material fast enough. So he was playing around with uh, creating a new geometry, making a solid uh, tool. And the index head slipped on him, and it gouged out a big piece of the of the part that he was facing. And he thought this could be something. Yeah. And so he generated geometry just through his mind and found out that he had something great. We tried to make the inserts here at, in, in the shop uh, he, many he years ago, and uh, it just didn't pan. So if you if you look in here at the robot, right now it's holding a, a pin or a nail through the blank. So this, this is the insert press to our geometry. Oversized. Everywhere it's oversized, about 25,000. Uh, so even the geometry on top here is just kind of a rough geometry and it's all oversized and it's not specific. So what happens is, it'll come in, pick one up, load it in a tray, door closes, put the pin in there, and then it grabs the pin and the insert, and now it's waiting to be ground. So once the once the, the grinding is done, it'll pick up the finish insert and turn it out. And every single move that the uh, robot does, oh, is it doing right now? It has to be programmed. Yeah. And once it's programmed, Cycle time right now is running about grinding time 264 seconds. This is awesome. Can't wait to show this. So again, link in the video description to how we've used the shear hog on the Tormach. It's just awesome. The rule of thumb is generally one cubic inch per horsepower. No, six. Six cubic inches per horsepower. That's in the pamphlet, I think. Something like that, but just an awesome, right. awesome tool for removing yeah, material. Yeah. Fast enough to yeah. do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you gotta. It's only limited by the machine, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know guys who, who I've, they've sent me videos and just really. Oh. So last night I was thinking like, the real issue is how do I move the machine faster? Right? I can't feed it in rapid. Um, and the, yeah. <laughs> the UMC SS will only go 800 inches a minute. 800? Yeah, 820 or something. But um, but then it still has to accelerate and deaccelerate. So that part wasn't a great example. 
if we can heal it down that part, there's no positive. Look at this. Yeah. Isn't this amazing? Oh. And this, um, this setup runs... This is recorded at 8 degrees, right? 8 degrees. This machine runs 24 hours a day? Six, 7 days a week? No. no. We run from Monday 6 a.m. to Friday 5 p.m. All different corner sizes. Look at it! This is awesome. So that's how the work holding happens. Look at that. Yep. And it'll place in the rough insert and the pin, and then it'll probe to yeah, not only uh, uh, straightness but also centrality. Yeah. So that's a pressed insert that's oversized, and most are all sort of geometries. And then watch, and it's going to come over and gauge it. Look at it! Look at it! And off we go. Perfect, you know, perfect work because of that. Yeah, so Tim was capturing the robot over here. And here's what blew my mind. The far tray over there, it has a reject bit pile, which is quite small. I, I was pretty confident. And then it's got, it, every nine, it drops it into a check bin, so they check them for QC. This robot could run, I think I said, significantly faster, but it's the bottleneck, so there's no point. Put the pin back in the blank so it's ready to go. Or it just sits there? Huh? Is there actually, so it's pressing it right now, right? Uh, yeah, it's just kind of holding it. You know, it's pushing on top of it. Right now. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. Back in this little cubby hole. Nice. Al, this is amazing. If you guys don't follow Alfred on Instagram, he posts a lot of really cool stuff. Here's a, a link or description of his Instagram handle. Again, coolant is chilled and So, so chilled because it can't heat up, it would cause a flash. It's called cobalt leaching. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. The same thing that would happen if you put a car solid carbide tool in a heat shrink and then put it right into the to a to a milling machine and put coolant on it, it would just go up. Wow. The carbide can get really, really hot until so it's milk. red and be fine. But if you can spit on it, it's garbage. Huh. Can't take in this, can't in this moisture. All right. so, Can you show us uh, the optical comparator real quick? So I was showing uh, you how uh, our our shear logs are not true 90 degree cutters. And so by example, I was showing it to you in the comparator to show you that the, uh, the leading edge, which should be this edge here, is always gonna be the highest edge, even if it's only by half a pound. Okay, that way, when you ramp or on single fluid, if you plunge, you're not going to get any pressure from the back side. Okay, but the shear that we have, we have a radius here, and then you have a radius here that's causing the, the, the shear that's on the insert itself. Causes an ellipse on the diameter of the tool, and I'll show you that in the comparator. And so for me, like I've never, I know what a comparator is, but I've never really seen one in person. And, and it's cool because this is really old technology and, and frankly pretty inexpensive. Um, you know, we've seen these at auction go for a few hundred bucks. And if you've got a need for one, uh, for QC or, or just understanding how things work, this is a t 10 or 20X zoom, is that what you said? These are 10 times. 10 times. We have a 20 times. Okay. But it has a very narrow field of view. So it's casting a light through here and, and projecting it up onto this grid, which may be tricky to film. But here comes the tool. Look, here's the tool. So you can change the angle. And these hash marks are very precise, uh, either dimensions or radii. So on the 432, we actually grind it to 25 thousandths. So we check the radius. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Okay. And then the wiper flat needs to be either flat or just Slight yeah, so this is what I was trying to show us. That so here's the wiper flat that I was talking about just now, and then here we got our leading edge. So you see that this edge here is just a little bit, maybe a thousandth higher than the, at the 400 depth of cut. The ellipse is caused by the top, because we're grinding a straight edge. 
So because of all the shear on there, it causes that ellipse, and that's why.